everyone, and welcome to Tiger Sidelines on MC22. This is Dave Matter and Gabe DeArmond. I'm Bo Bayman. We will talk about basketball in a little bit as the season kicks off this week, but let's talk about football, which didn't have a kickoff last week because no. it was the bye week, and the Tigers enter at 5-3, and 2-2 two and two in the SEC. As they go to Georgia this week, it's probably not going to be super steamy there. Won't be that hot. It's going to be a good night for football. It'd be a fun night to just hang out. Yeah. <laughs> and see what happens uh, against the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs with a big win against Florida, obviously. And the big question for Missouri, if you're a Missouri fan, is Kelly Bryant going to play? Well, we talked to him on Tuesday, and we both walked away. I didn't have a great impression that he's going to play. Um, he basically said he has to be really confident in his body, in his hamstring, for him to go out there and play. And I think you even asked him, if, if you're not as mobile, if, the, if you're a little compromised with your leg, will you still play? He basically said no. So <laughs> we're not going to get a, a, a just a throw-only Kelly Bryant because if that's the case, he doesn't. it sounds like he doesn't want to play. Now, a lot can change between Tuesday and kickoff, but that's what he said Tuesday. Well, I tell you, Gabe, he's a fast healer, according to his head <laughs> yeah. coach. And that's what I hear. I mean, <laughs> look, here was the most telling thing to me. Every player we've ever asked Barry Odom about on Tuesday, if the game was today, he'd play. Well, if the game was yesterday, Kelly Bryant wouldn't have played. And I don't know if you guys have ever had a hamstring. Like, I've never pulled one, but I've had a hamstring right. issue. And you think it's okay, and you jog. And then as soon as you start to go fast, you're like, oh, this isn't okay. Yeah, I mean, right. it takes a long time. And I, and I do think in – nobody will ever say this out loud, but somewhere in Barry Odom's mind has to be, look, if we play him and, we, and it's worse – then we hurt our chances to maybe beat Florida at home, right. to do anything against Tennessee or Kentucky. This is one you just go into, and I don't know if it matters who the quarterback is because the chances of winning this game aren't high, and the chances of scoring more than 14 points are even lower than that. Right, and if he's not himself, if he's the quarterback that we saw at Kentucky, right. is that any worse Doesn't than matter. what Taylor Powell can do? Right. I, don't, I don't think so. And again, it's the competition. If this were against Tennessee or if this were against Arkansas, um, maybe, maybe Arkansas is a bad example because he'd probably win with one of us out there. But right. uh, <laughs> if it were somebody, South Carolina, then, then yeah. But this one, I don't know. And I do always laugh at, you know, and I understand why they say it, but everybody in a program is like, every game's the same. Right. No, every game's not the same. Playing him this weekend against Tennessee would be different than playing him against Georgia. And if Taylor Powell plays this week, then you have to believe they're going to try to run the football. I mean, and they're going to have to run the football. Of course, Georgia, you would think, would probably stack eight or nine in the box, and running the football would not be that Happens easy. Happens to be the only team in America that hasn't allowed a rushing touchdown this year, <laughs> yep. so there's that. Their defense is so good, and here's the crazy thing. They don't, they don't get takeaways at all. They're second to last in the SEC, so they just stop you and force you to punt nonstop. As I remember the game last year that was here in Columbia, we came in after and we said, you just see the difference in speed between Georgia and Missouri. I think you'll see that again this week. Well, and that was a weird game last year. I mean, you could – Missouri fans came away from it going, well, we were a bad call and a play away from winning. Right. And I came away from it going, that was kind of like, you know, the, the cat with the ball of yarn. Like, yeah. I'm just going to knock it around a little bit. And, and then eventually I'll rip it apart if I need to. And they never really needed to. But, look, Georgia is – Still, I know they lost to South Carolina, but at the time that happened, I said, that's the worst thing that could happen to Missouri because right. that yep. was the wake-up call. And I think Missouri fans maybe hoped Georgia would come into this not really playing for much. They're number six in the playoff right. rankings. Yep. They went out. They're going to have a shot at a national championship. They're playing for something. And I think the only hope for Missouri beyond just playing a perfect game is – is Georgia spent after playing Florida, and are they maybe looking ahead to Auburn? Because nobody on this Georgia right. team has ever lost to Missouri before. If Missouri can overlook Vanderbilt and Kentucky, I don't know if they did, yeah. but Vanderbilt, then can Georgia overlook Missouri? Maybe. But once the ball's kicked off, I'm not sure all that matters. I, I'm not sure Kirby Smart lets his team overlook Missouri because even though Georgia's always won, this has been a weirdly yeah, competitive series. Yeah. It doesn't matter where they play. I mean, right. even down at Georgia. Nine to six. Yeah, <laughs> right. We'll see what happens this week, but... Boy, oh boy, when you look at the stretch the next two weeks, Georgia, then Florida, earlier on you were thinking, okay, this is you're playing for the East. you got to win one of them. Technically, you still are. Technically, you yeah. still are, but kind of, I mean, you're playing for your season. You're playing for your life kind of right now. Absolutely, because if you lose to, to Georgia and Florida, what's left is Tennessee and Arkansas. So much hinges on that Tennessee game because if you – 
if that if that game you win and then you beat Arkansas, you can say, okay, well we salvaged it. It's not horrible. But no one's raising any banners or throwing any parades for this right. season. You lose next three, gosh, then it's circling the drain. I think truthfully, the only way you can salvage what fans think of this season is if win you win the last four. No, I think win you got to win them all. Because wow. if you win one, you're eight and four, and it's okay. But at the beginning of the year, we said eight right. and four is the minimum that's okay with this schedule. Yeah. And still, the narrative will be as it should be, I think. Okay, you beat Florida and lost to Vanderbilt, Kentucky, right. and Wyoming. Uh, uh, short of winning out, I think this season is a disappointment. Right. We talked about two things last week going into this game. One, Extra time for this team has not been good, and the road has not been good for this team. I mean, two factors really going against Missouri as they go and try to beat Georgia. I mean, I, everyone said the time off helped. Uh, we'll see. I mean, how do they know what else now? Are they gonna what say? else they could say? No, it was bad. We need another week off. And then the road part, I, I don't think that was a factor at Vanderbilt. It probably was at Wyoming. Kentucky, I think the rain and the way they reacted to it was more of a factor than being on the road. But this is a team that has to create its own energy when things don't go their way because you don't get that on the road. And I don't know if they have the players or the temperament to do that. Well, and I don't think the road or the bye week is the big factor this week. The big factor is they're playing one of the five, six best teams <laughs> right. in the country, well, yeah. and they're not one of the five or six best teams in the country. And as you mentioned, Georgia really has everything out ahead of it. Right. I mean, Ohio State and Penn State are going to play. Uh, Alabama, LSU play this weekend. So things are going to drop out of that top four and five, and they're right there if they win the East and then win the SEC championship to just claim one of those spots. Yeah, and there is a path. I have a hard time seeing it happen, but there's a path to three SEC teams in the top four at the end of this thing. I mean, okay. if Alabama beats LSU and LSU wins everything else, then, you know, Georgia beats Alabama in the SEC title game, Clemson trips up, all of a sudden, like, and if you want chaos and you want an 18 playoff, root for that. Yeah. Because if they put three SEC teams in, which they never would, they but would, if yeah. they did, everybody's going to say, no, we got to scrap this thing. And by the way, Ohio State was number one, then it's LSU, Alabama, and Clemson being left out at, at, at five. five. It, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm sure that Clemson fans will get all up in an uproar. Hey, look at the disrespect because Penn State, who have they played? But. I mean, if you're Dabo, you love it because now you just sure. get to dangle that carrot out in front of your team. Hey, nobody respects you guys, even though you won the national championship, which is fine. I mean, the smart kids will realize, well, wait, two of those teams ahead of us are going to lose. <laughs> right. Well, and all it all it proved is Clemson can't lose a game and get in. I don't think Alabama can lose a game and get in. No, I mean, they'd have Alabama's got nothing yep. other than this LSU game. They lose this week, they're not making the playoff. Yeah, I think the best thing about the rankings were no respect for Baylor or Minnesota because they haven't played anybody. Right. And they didn't get <laughs> rewarded for just being undefeated. I didn't realize how bad Minnesota's schedule was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is horrendous. And, and the they results know. aren't very good. I mean, they barely right. beat, what, South Dakota State and Fresno State. Hey, and Jackrabbits are a tough team. <laughs> they did reward... A team like Oklahoma State, though, I mean, they're ranked yeah. despite three losses. Well, I, I didn't quite I mean, understand that one a whole lot. Texas fans weren't happy about that, but whatever. You can't lose. Well, where was Missouri? Were yeah. they there? 26? I did not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Had they just won at Wyoming, they'd have been mm -hmm. probably in there. Okay, uh, we've been talking a lot about Georgia. We haven't mentioned much about their win against Florida, which was pretty impressive last week in Jackson. Yeah, I watched that game, and I'm thinking in the middle of the third quarter, I'm like, I think Missouri can hang with Florida. They could probably beat them. They're not that impressive. And then they made it a game. They played pretty tough on both sides of the ball, but Georgia just put a clinic on them. I mean, they're yep. so good defensively, so methodical on offense. We're used to these high-flying offenses that go out and spread five wide and chuck it deep all the time, like LSU and Alabama. Georgia just blinds up like a pro style, old pro-style team right. and just methodically beats you, and they're fine by winning by seven. That's, that's where I don't think they... Can I, they can? I don't know if they will run away and beat Missouri by 40 because their offense, that's not their right. style, but they're content doing it their way behind that offensive line it, and a very balanced attack. But that brings in, like, you have a smaller margin for error when you right. do it yes. that way because if, if your plan is to win by scoring 20 points, then all it takes is a punt return, one bad turnover, right. something like that, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, hang on, instead of being up seven, we're in a tie game, you know? So... Yeah, I agree. Georgia isn't the type of team that blows decent teams out, right? but they do beat those teams. Right. Yeah, and we expect that to happen. Now, one thing I want to talk about here, it's basketball season now. It is. And the worst thing for football 
is to have people not talking about them. And I kind of feel like they're in that danger zone, aren't they? Hey, well, we were joking yesterday. I said covering Missouri is just a constant battle of, hey, the season's about to start and then halfway through. When's the other season yeah, start? You yeah. know, I mean, and that's, a, there's no question. The the fan base is much more interested in how Conzo Martin's team is going to be than the rest of this football season right now. But guess what? If we get to bragging rights and they're seven and five, then they're going to be like, when's spring football? Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Uh, six o'clock kickoff for Georgia and Missouri, and it'll be on ESPN. Georgia favored by 17 right about now. And if, for some reason that they say Kelly Bryant is out, I think that number might go a little higher. It'll probably go up. I don't know if it changes it a lot for matter, Missouri, though. but I think it will in the perception of people gambling. You know, they'll yeah. be, oh, my gosh, their starter is out who, yeah. you know, played at Clemson. So, you know, bet more on, on the, Georgia. The line really to me is how many do we think Georgia is going to score? Because I, re- I have a hard time seeing Missouri getting to 10 in this game, honestly. Oh, I, I mean, they, yeah. they didn't at Kentucky. Why would they <laughs> against yeah. a, a oh, or Vandy. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be potentially ugly. Uh, on Saturday. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we will check your tweets. You're watching Tiger Sidelines right here on MC22. Welcome back to Tiger Sidelines, everybody. Gabe DeArmond, Dave Matter, and I'm Bo Bayman. Thanks for joining us as always. We are at Tiger Sidelines on Twitter. It's time to Check the old tweet machine, and Lou comes in and says, is Parker Brown on scholarship? Yes. And expected to contribute? Probably not. Not really. I mean, look, there are 13 guys. Contribute, there's probably 10, maybe 11 that contribute in that at some point they'll play meaningful minutes. I think Parker Brown and Axel Okongo, probably there are no meaningful minutes. Right. This is not a team that's going to line up two big guys. I mean, they're... the, the. Jeremiah Tillman's your center, and then they're going to surround him with perimeter players. And mm-hmm. Brown is a is a backup there, and he's behind Reed Nico, and he's behind Mitchell Smith. So I just don't yeah. see him getting many minutes. Alex wants to know: Give me a Mizzou athlete that you weren't expecting to be a pro, but ended up sticking, and one that didn't work out in the pros that surprised you. Can be any sport. P.S. I miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I mean the only guy that really. Like, I thought Damari Carroll would be a pro, but I didn't think yeah. he'd be nearly the pro he is. He's That's a good one. He's, like, I didn't think he was athletic enough to play in the NBA. Yeah, I'd say football. Andrew Gashkar had a nice NFL yeah, career. That's a good couple one. different teams, and he, you know, he was a nice player. He was all all Big 12, but never an NFL guy. I think the one I'm Bo surprised. Brinkley. Bo Brinkley. still That's making a good, one. good coin as a long yeah. snapper. The guy I'm surprised, I think people would say Chase Kaufman a lot because he didn't, he lasted a while, but he never became yeah. a star. Shane Ray, just out of the league. Yeah, that's First right. First round pick. I mean, is he, he no team? He yeah, didn't stick with Baltimore. He's, he's had several uh, tryouts, but can't stick with anyone. That's unbelievable. All right, losing to weak teams has crippled MU coaches in the past. In '76, on a Frio beat number eight USC, number two Ohio State, number three Nebraska, and number fourteen Colorado. But season-ending losses to hapless Kansas in two straight seasons saw his doom. Without huge wins. Can Mizzou expect the fans to go all in? Says it, Steve. It really is interesting. In that eight and four can be perceived so many different ways. Yeah. If you're eight and four and you just lose the four games you should lose and you beat a bunch of bad teams, people aren't that excited. Look at Matt Campbell. Yeah. Like he's got a couple pretty bad losses at Iowa State. Now I understand Iowa State's tougher right. to go eight and four at, and I'm not saying Matt Campbell's done a bad job, but he's got a couple pretty questionable losses. But he's beaten a lot of top 10, top 15 teams. And so there's this perception that he's doing an amazing job. The record's pretty similar. It's exactly the same as Barry Odom. Yeah, but it's, it, it, you know, whereas Barry Odom's might be more like this, Campbell's all Up over. and down, yeah. All right, who's the heir apparent to mayor of Como with Sophie off to Arizona? And does it necessarily need to be a <laughs> I mean, member of the common. women's basketball team? I can't think of any player on any Mizzou squad who matches the personality and get mad game combination formally displayed. First of all, Columbia game. is allowed to have a male mayor. Like, that's okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a women's basketball player. I mean, I don't know. Right now, it's Conzo is the guy that I think is kind <laughs> of. Yeah, there's no real, you know, just iconic superstar athletes here right now that are just totally beloved. I mean, right. we'll see what happens in this basketball season, but. Uh, for both men and women, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's part one. of Sophie's thing too is she was from Columbia and had and, and, always been here. Right, and before her, it may have been Jaden Cox, and Jaden right. comes around every once in a while to 
win a world title, and then, right. oh, yeah. That, don't forget, I'm not Mitchell sure there's made. a beloved player on this football team right now. Yeah, that's fair. Dawson? Kale Garrett. Everybody still loves Kale Garrett. Garrett. Kale Garrett, sure. Javon Pickett is a cybersecurity major, and Trey Jackson is an automotive engineering major. Uncommon choices. Do athletes have the same choice as every other student has, or are certain majors impossible due to schedule conflicts? They, they have the choice on their recruiting visit. Right. But yep. once they get in and they get in on campus and they see the workload and they see how they're doing, it's I think it's the tutor's job to kind of or, or the academic wing's job to kind of steer them. Hey, this is something more realistic for you with time management and workload yep. and everything else but, and what you're capable of. But they're student athletes. We're here for the school right, first. Right. But if it comes down to I got to do a shift at KOMU or I got to go to football practice, like football practice wins out. So yep. right. you don't see a lot of journalism, don't see a lot of engineering, things like that. Uh, the next one is even if Mizzou beats Georgia and Florida, wouldn't it just make you mad thinking about how amazing this season could have been had they not blown it at Wyoming, Vandy, and Kentucky? Well, that would be the sentiment. I mean, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Will it make us mad? Not really. No. But, no. yes, it would make and then, them mad. Do you think there's any reason to believe Mizzou will win any of its four, four remaining? Well, yes, because Arkansas, uh, they are awful. I mean, after every game, our Arkansas side is updating a story about how historic their last wow. two years are. And as I know everybody thinks Tennessee is like turning the corner. Aren't they still just three and five? I think they're four and five because they beat UAB. Okay, right. Okay. Basically, they yeah. have to win two of their last three to make a bowl. They're playing better, but that's because they couldn't have been playing worse than they yeah, started they terrible. So that's I right. wouldn't say Jeremy Pruitt has like, you know, figured out how to win at right. Tennessee. They might yet. be playing better than Missouri like as of right. today. Absolutely. But Missouri's season is still better overall. Right. All right. Any slight advantage to be had by intentionally keeping Kelly's status vague for Saturday? I have to think that... He couldn't play on Tuesday. It's not realistic he could play on Saturday. Also, any read on Kelly not wanting to play? All right, so coaches act like they're protecting nuclear codes here. You know how long it's going to matter that Georgia doesn't know who Missouri's starting quarterback is? Maybe three plays. Right. Maybe. Yeah. And that's in. Look, we saw the offense with Taylor Powell. It's not different. They don't right. call different plays when Kelly Bryant's the quarterback than they do when Taylor Powell's the quarterback. Yeah. So, no. As for him not wanting to play, I mean, I don't get that vibe. I think, you know, like any player, whether it's reasonable or not, he's probably thinking about his future. You know, you don't want to make an injury get worse. Um, I think back to Blaine Gabbert's sophomore year. Remember when he had the ankle? Mm -hmm. And he should not have played. He should not have played. He was wearing a boot, and you would ask him, how's the ankle? And he would act like, you're crazy. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm fine. Now, that was toughness. That was stubbornness. It might also have been the concussion that he might have been technically He was had. also a sophomore, not draft eligible. So it didn't really matter. He was coming back regardless. Kelly's in a little bit different situation. I can see where he's thinking about his future, and he doesn't want to get out there and be compromised. But I don't think it's a matter of him not wanting to play. And, and plus, to your point before, Gabe, I mean, you feel that thing pull, the yeah. hamstring, plus he's had a knee. I mean. But the other thing is, I think most players, what was weird about the way Kelly answered that question was, I think most players, especially quarterbacks, think it doesn't matter how hurt I am, I'm the best guy. Right. Yeah. His answer almost seemed to be like, if I'm not good enough to help us, I don't want to be out there and hurt the team, which is an admirable response, but not one that most people say out loud. Right, and, and it might rub some people the wrong way. My question is, you know, he played seven possessions after he got the injury. Right. right. Played, but he was okay to play then, but two weeks later, it's it, still bothering him. Did he make it worse? I mean, it's hard to. And if he's, if it is a question if he can play on Saturday, why is he doing anything at practice? Yeah. Why is he out there even going through stretch lines and jogging around? I mean, I, I've got a hard time believing that he has to have a Tuesday practice to play Saturday. Should probably be in more treatment. Just sit there. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think he could use some practice throwing to Albert O a few more times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of people think that, apparently, Dave. All right, thanks for the tweets. We are at Tiger Sidelines, and we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the women's basketball opener, plus the men get ready for theirs, and we'll talk about their exhibition game. You're watching Tiger Sidelines on MC22. Welcome back, everybody. This is Tiger Sidelines. That's Gabe, Dave, and I'm Bo, and thanks for joining us as always. Let's turn to basketball now. First, let's talk about the men. They won in their exhibition game. The final score looked okay, but at halftime, I mean, it kind of like every college basketball team. If you've watched the past couple of nights, 
everybody's struggling to get going. There hasn't been a team that's like, whoa, they're really good. And I would say Mizzou fell in that category. Yeah, they had, like, I was there. I was one of the few that was there. And they, they had some of, like, those jittery nerve turnovers, the ones that just didn't make sense, like, that I don't think these guys would normally make. Uh, and Central Missouri was acting like it was their NBA finals. Sure. I mean, they were they were fired up. They, they couldn't miss from three. And then as, lo- as the game kind of went on a little bit more, Missouri just easily pulled away. As we tape this, the Tigers will play tonight in their yeah. opener. Uh, what are you looking for? I mean, they got three games in a hurry here. Yeah, a win. I mean, Incarnate Word, I thought that was like a volleyball school out of high all-girls school in St. Louis. St. Louis. I guess I'm wrong. Uh, look, I know nothing about Incarnate Word and don't plan to learn anything. They should win. But here's what I... Here's what I do like about college basketball, and social media has made this worse with football. Every game is such an event, right? And one one loss can end your season. So we've got to make these sweeping judgments on every game and every quarter and every series. College basketball, like, I don't know, the number two team in the country turned the ball over 28 times and got beat last night. And that's okay. It's not going to wreck Kansas' season that that happened. Yeah. I like a sport where maybe we are a little bit more capable of going – yeah, there are some things to look at there, but I, I'm not going to make broad generalizations off one out of 31. Absolutely. The Tigers will host Northern Kentucky on Friday. Then they travel to Xavier next Tuesday. So, I mean, again, three games in about six days. Northern Kentucky's be... not a bad team yeah. either. That'll be a decent challenge. It, it's not a name opponent at all, but they're, they're a tournament team, you know, a couple of the last few years. and. Uh, that's a decent test, and Xavier's a, a big test. I mean, they're a top 25 team, and that's on the road. Not an easy place to play, and that, that's a, a really good indicator of just how this team looks early. In the that's year. the kind of game, like, a couple years ago when Missouri went to Utah early yeah. and just yeah. was completely outclassed from the beginning. Like, you don't need Missouri to win at Xavier, but you'd like to see, if, if this team's going to be what you think it is, you'd like to see them go put up a fight. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Robin Pinchton's team struggled in their home opener Winning in overtime over Western Illinois, 97-89, it was a big-time struggle. They they uh, trailed most of that game, had yeah. to play catch-up, and then finally went ahead in the overtime. They were down nine in the third quarter. Um, they're a small team. We know that. They got out-rebounded, and they got outscored in the paint, and that could really haunt them, you know, when they face some better teams, obviously. I mean, they went with – they started four guards, and Haley Frank is their – Big player, and she's what six one. So they're going to be a smaller team this year. There's no doubt about that. But they hit threes like they did down the stretch. You know they can they can get hot and be a, be a pretty potent team. Amber Smith carried them in the overtime, and she I think had twenty seven yeah. points. And I, I think when we watch men's basketball, we now are like being a young team is not an excuse, right? right. Because right. freshmen are the best players in the country and are going pro. In women's basketball, freshmen are still freshmen. Right. And yeah. Haley Frank and Asia Blackwell largely played like freshmen last night. The The assumption is they're going to be better six weeks from now than they were last night. And Blackwell had a tough night. I think she, was she over from the field? Yeah, one point, four fouls. I think she only played nine minutes, so she'll get better from there. Yeah, That's like no freshman question. Jeremiah Tillman right there. And speaking of Jeremiah Tillman, a lot of uh, people be watching him these next few minutes to see if he can stay on the floor. I, I, he's the difference between this team being just kind of ordinary and being – you know, a contender in the it, SEC. He was better at that last year, though. Like, everybody yeah. pretends his first two years have been the same. He was a lot better at avoiding foul trouble than he was as a freshman. Still not great, but yeah. a lot better. I, I wrote this this week. This is this is this shows you how rare it is to have a junior who's like him, a 6'10 guy. The guys his size and skill, they're gone by the yeah. junior year. Mm-hmm. He's only averaged, I think, 21 minutes a game in his career, but he's 12th in the SEC in career points. Of, of returning players and like seventh in rebounds. So he's wow. one of the most productive guys left in the league, and that's because everybody his size is playing <laughs> right. in the NBA. Unbelievable. All right, the volleyball team lost a couple of matches, falling to number 13 Florida and then lost at Texas A&M. They're 14 and 6, 6 and 4 overall. They'll be at Alabama on Friday and then at Georgia on Sunday. Let's go to our picks of the week. The biggest game will probably, no doubt, be LSU Alabama. I mean, there's actually. Earlier in the year, we've been like, where are the good games? This week has a pretty good slate. Yeah, and I really want to pick LSU in this game, especially because you don't know how Tua is. But 
It's in Tuscaloosa, and this just strikes me as the kind of game where Nick Saban's going to convince his team that everyone hates them and is picking right. against them, yeah. and they're going to come out and win. Right. I think it'll be a shootout, though. I don't think either team is great mm -hmm. defensively, but they are incredible offensively. We get our first kind of good look at Minnesota as they will take on Penn State. And it'll be interesting to see if they can row the boat yeah, up there. Yeah, I think one of the land. oars is going to kind of fall off in the water yeah. this week. I don't, Penn State's pretty good. Yeah, and they're only, they're only favored by six and a half. It's on the road, but, yeah, I don't think Minnesota's for real. Missouri have any chance at number six Georgia? Um, a little Realistically, bit. Realistically, little, right? A little bit. I mean, it's not impossible, but let's... I mean, no one gave South Carolina a chance when they went to right. uh, Athens. And guess what? Nobody gave Vanderbilt a chance when Missouri <laughs> right. went there either. It's a good point, but they're going to have to create turnovers or they're going to have to score a weird they're way. They're going to have to play really well and they're going to have to get help. Yeah. Right, and, and or, or Kelly Bryan is going to have to come out and play his best game, or Taylor yeah. Powell is going to be a, a hero forever at Missouri because he's going to have to play a great game. <laughs> and there'll be a QB controversy. <laughs> and I mean, Georgia pretty much wraps up the East if they win on Saturday. If Powell beats Georgia on the road, there shouldn't be a controversy. That's he's true. Right. He, yeah, the, <laughs> Kelly Bryant gets Wally pipped if that happens. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. All right, we'll talk about it next week right here on Tiger Sidelines. Thanks to Matt and Bill and Brian behind the scenes. That's Gabe Diarman and Dave Matter. I'm Bo Bayman. We'll see you next week right here on MC22. Thank you.